In this video, we are going to discuss how to win in just 4 move and this attack is also known as the fried lever attack and this attack is done from the white side and we are also going to check out the best reply against this fried lever attack from black sides. So let's check it out. So in the fried lever attack, white starts out the game with 1 e4 and black reply with e5 and soon we la land in this position which is also known as the Italian game and after playing bishop to c4, in this position black plays knight to f6. Playing knight to f6 is one of the most common move in the position. I am sure that you must have saw this position at least 100 times. Okay, because this position is very normal. And after playing knight to f6, now you are simply going to play knight to g5. And after playing knight to g5, white is already preparing to capture the pawn on f7 with the bishop and the knight. And the only way to protect the pawn on f7 is to play d5. Cutting off the connection on the pawn on f7 from the bishop on c4. If your opponent tries to play something like developing the bishop, like playing bishop to c5, then you can simply go on and capture the pawn on f7 with the bishop and give a check. And after king e7, you can simply pull your bishop back. The black king can no longer castle and you are already a pawn up. And even at the place of capturing the pawn with the bishop, you can also go for capturing the pawn with the knight, hitting the queen and the rook. And But I must recommend you to go for capturing the pawn on f7 with the bishop. And after king e7, just pull your bishop back and you are completely better. So playing bishop c5 is not possible. And if black tries to play d5 in the position, which is the best move and the most common move, after d5, you are simply going to capture the pawn on d5 with the e pawn. And after e into d5, black captures the pawn with the knight. And what black is thinking in the position is, the bishop cannot capture the knight on d5 because the queen is already protecting the knight. And the black queen is also hitting the knight on g5. So white cannot simply castle in the position because the knight is hanging on g5. So after playing knight into d5, white is going to come up with uh, an incredible move in the position. Knight into f7, what a sacrifice. After playing knight into f7, white is already hitting the queen on d8 as well as the rook on h8. So black is kind of forced to capture the knight on f7 and now we are going to play queen to f3 check. King is forced to go on e6 because if black tries to go back with the king on by playing king to e8, then simply knight is hanging on d5. And now the uh, material wise the position is equal and even white is already threatening to checkmate the black king by playing king to uh, queen to f7 game over and black can no longer castle even. So playing king to e8 doesn't make any sense. Black is forced to play king to e6. And after playing king to e6, white is simply going to develop the knight to c3. Now there are three attackers on the knight on d5. So black is forced to play knight to b4, adding another defender. Now white is simply going to castle in the position. After castle, black cannot go for capturing the pawn on c2 because after knight into c2, this knight is simply hanging on d5. So black is forced to play c6 in the position, trying to defend the knight on d5. But after playing c6, white is simply going to play a stunning move in the position, which is simply playing d4. And after playing d4, white idea is to simply open up the position. In, the posi in this position, there are two moves. Black can either go for capturing the pawn on d4, or black can go for capturing the pawn on c2 with the knight. If black tries to capture the pawn on c2 with the knight, then we are simply going to capture the pawn on e5. Knight into a1, capturing the rook. Knight into d5, c into d5. And after c into d5, white is simply going to play rook to d1. Now there are three attackers on the pawn on d5. And the pawn on d5 cannot capture the bishop on c4 because the queen is simply hanging on d8. And after playing rook to d1, if black tries to play king e7 trying to run away with the king, we can simply give a bishop to g5 check and the queen is gone. And if black tries to play something like h6, stopping this bishop g5 ideas, and now black idea is to play king to e7. In this position, 
White can simply capture the pawn on d5 with a check. And after something like king to e7, queen f7 is already game over. And in this position, after bishop into d5 check, if black tries to play king to d7, then white can simply play bishop to g8, a fantastic check, king f7, and white can simply go on and capture the queen, and white is completely winning in the position. So this is what happens if black tries to capture the pawn on c2 with the knight. Now let's discuss what will happen if black tries to capture the pawn on d4 with the e pawn. If in this position we have e into d4, in this position white is simply going to develop the bishop to f4, we are going to sacrifice, uh, sacrifice our knight on c3. So after d into c3, we are simply going to give a check. If king f7, we have bishop to g5, it's a check and the queen is dead. Queen f6 is forged and after bishop into f6, you are simply a queen up. So playing king f7 is not possible. In this position, if black tries to play king to f6, then we can simply play bishop to c7 again a check and the queen is already dead. So you can say that there are no good moves in the position. Even in this position, if you try to play king to d7, queen g4 is already game over. There is no way black can continue the position. So this was the fried lever attack. And you can also call it as the how to win in four move. Because if I show you the position from the start, then after on the move number knight to f6, white simply played knight to g5. And you can say there was no there was no defense from the black side. If bl black doesn't know how to how to play this position correctly. Now let's talk about what is the best defense from the black side in this position. In this position, the best defense from the black side after playing knight g5 is to play d5. White captures the pawn and after e into d5, in this position, most 99% of the players goes wrong because the most natural move is to capture the pawn on d5, knight into d5, but they doesn't see it coming knight into f7 is already game over. At the place of capturing the pawn on d5, black must play knight to a5 in this position. This is the right continuation. The idea of playing knight to a5 in this position is now the black knight is already hitting the bishop on c4. So the best move for white in this position is to play bishop to b5 giving a check and black plays c6. White captures the pawn, black captures the pawn. And in this position, black is a pawn down, but in the exchange of a pawn down, black has got a whole amount of, huge amount of development. Black can develop the bishop, his another bishop, black can play h6 at any point hitting the knight. For example, after playing b into c6, if white tries to play queen to f3, which is the best move in the position, you cannot go for capturing the bishop on b5 because the rook is hanging on a8. So after playing queen f3, you must play bishop to e7, simply developing the bishop. We have bishop into c6 check, knight into c6, queen into c6, bishop d7, queen f3 back, and now black simply castle. In this position, black is actually two pawn down. But in the exchange, simply look at the position. Black is able to castle. Black all pieces are now simply developed. Whereas if I talk about the white position, I don't know what is what the knight on g5 is doing. White, uh, white is going to take a move to castle in the position. Whereas white bishop, knight and the rook are simply cornered in on the one side. So you can say that it's basically quantity versus quality. And I personally feel that in this position, black is actually very comfortable to play the position. For example, after castle, if white tries to castle in the position, then black are already having some dangerous threats like knight to g4. Putting some pressure on the pawn on h2, also hitting the knight on g5. You can say it's a very, it's a very interesting position for black. Black can continue by playing f5, rook f6, rook h6, and I think black is very comfortable. So this was the interesting fried lever attack. What is the, how to play the fried lever attack. And I've also showed you the best defense against the fried lever attack. So I must consider you that you must try this interesting attack from the white side. 
uh, to play against your opponents and m- make sure to win the game okay and if you like this game then make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel because i'm always going to come up with this interesting videos like this and make sure to share this video with everyone so that everyone must know how to play this interesting fried liver attack and how to defend against the fried liver attack so till then stay tuned and keep watching one shot chess